Y254. Imagine. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Y254 Updates. My name is Patricia Murioki. I hope that you're continuing to keep safe. I hope that you're following every directive that has been given by the ministry as we continue to fight COVID-19. Tonight on Y254, we're going to be talking about a very interesting and a very important topic. That is how private schools are coping with COVID-19. We know since the first case was reported in the country, there are certain changes that have been made and one of them is the fact that students have had to remain in school and the likelihood of them going back to school uh, probably is not uh, that clear with expectations of uh, school returning to school Sorry, schools reopening being expected probably in September, but with the numbers still continuing to rise, we really do not know if you're going to achieve that. And tonight we're going to be talking to two amazing teachers who have found ways to still continue to offer their services uh, to their uh, students. That is, we have Augustus Mutua, who is a teacher from Waldorf uh, Woodlands School, and we also have Ruth Viongo from the same school. So they're going to just help us uh, know, like, how has it been for their students? We have Ruth who deals with uh, very young kids, so to really get to understand how are they able to manage follow-ups and to really see how the progress of the e-learning has worked for them. Talk to us on our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. But before we dive to that discussion, let us have a look at currently how the country is doing as far as COVID-19 is concerned. We've heard from the CS, that is the Ministry of Health, there are new cases today, and this is the highest that we've reported in the country since the pandemic hit uh, the country. So how have you been? How are you doing? Probably what are some of the things that you've had to change for you to be able to adapt to everything that is happening right now, Ruth? Okay. What we did is we, before we, uh, COVID came, mm -hmm. we were two weeks to close in school. Mm -hmm and uh, COVID came and we were to close schools. Mm -hmm. So we did a survey mm -hmm. with, uh, we were teaching for the two weeks mm -hmm. and uh, we followed it up with the parents mm -hmm. to see how they feel about the, the teaching. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we ended up making the decision mm -hmm. out of uh, consultations with the parents and uh, with the teachers mm -hmm. and with the management of the school. Okay, yeah. so Augustus, give us a brief background for us to really understand uh, World of Woodlands. Please tell us something about the school. Well, to understand World of Woodlands, mm -hmm. I think I would like to start with a quote from Rudolf Steiner that the fear of a thing mm -hmm. prevents you from seeing it properly. Mm -hmm. And Rudolf Steiner is the one who started World of Education. Mm -hmm. And it actually did happen sometimes back uh, after the First World War, that was 1914 to 1918. Okay. And the first World of School that was started was in uh, 1919. Mm -hmm. uh, and it started because there was so many things that were happening. Just mm -hmm. like the pandemic that we are in right now, mm -hmm. uh, the whole world was in a situation where they needed something new. Okay. And now Rudolf Steiner, who was a doctor mm -hmm. and he was being consulted on many things, he was uh, approached by one of the uh, company owners mm -hmm. and um, his name was Emil Malt. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he wanted uh, something that can help the children mm -hmm. so that they can start healing. So by extension, you can say world of education is a healing, is a therapeutic education. Okay. So he's one who started all this. And mm -hmm. uh, actually, last thing, we did celebrate 100 years of world of education. Wow, well, congratulations. So world of education, in a nutshell, mm -hmm. is education that teaches the whole child, mm -hmm. teaches the head, the heart, and the hands. Wow, that is amazing. I think probably that is what we are tr we've been trying to really achieve with our new curriculum. I hope that we... Uh, we really get to that point. So now coming back to really talking about what uh, what has been happening, how the, the pandemic has affected different sectors. Education is one of them that has really been affected and in a very wrong way because we also have students who cannot uh, manage to do the online classes. We have schools that cannot really manage to do this. We have places with schools where 
they are not even like equipments in terms of a desk and they have not had that for a, for a very long time and for us to be talking about online teaching in certain schools then it's something that cannot really be achieved but for your school I understand that you've been able to start the e-learning to something that probably has been has worked for you so how have you managed to make sure that with online learning during the the pandemic that you're still able to track the progress of your students starting with you Ruth especially talking about you because you tackle the preschool these are very young kids probably who have been used to just being around their friends so how you manage to follow up with your progress oh yeah what we've done is uh, before we started we consulted the parents mm -hmm. and uh, we agreed that we are going to work together. Mm -hmm. It's a partnership between the teacher mm -hmm. and the parents and the caregivers. Mm -hmm. So what we do, uh, well, once I, I give out mm -hmm. what the, the, the children should be doing, mm -hmm. uh, the parents come in and assist. Okay. Because uh, as uh, Augustus has put it, our, our learning is more hands-on. Mm -hmm. And especially for the zero to seven years, they mm -hmm. are doing most of the activities, like drawing, like painting, like mm -hmm. modeling. Mm -hmm. So my work is to introduce, and then the caregiver or the parents who with the child are going to support them so that we achieve the goal we want to achieve okay. together. Uh, for you, you deal with the primary school. Yes, sure. So has, it been, has there been any challenges that you've been able to experience uh, with the transition from the physical learning to the e-learning while you're probably doing uh, the, uh, the, the, the learning online? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have been having some very few challenges, mm -hmm. especially when we did start. Mm -hmm. Because for the children to learn how to log in, how to log out, mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. and also now uh, getting accustomed to this new way of learning, mm -hmm. it was not very easy for them. Mm -hmm. But amazingly, after two weeks, uh, they all got it right. Mm -hmm. And also, something else about our world of education, uh, the approach that we always use uh, was taking care of many things that happened during the online uh, learning. Mm -hmm. Children are not always uh, stuck on the screen like this. Mm -hmm. Yes. In our learning, we always have three parts. Mm -hmm. Like when you start a lesson, you always have to start with a, with a rhythmic part where they make a lot of movements. Mm -hmm. They even step away from the screen and they, they can make uh, like times tables like two is mm -hmm. one times two. Mm -hmm. for enjoying every moment that they are doing, mm -hmm. then afterwards they sit down and then when they are very calm, there is a story mm -hmm. that's now going to lead into introduction of a new content. Mm -hmm. And then after the story now they do something, could be they are going to draw or uh, they're going to do arithmetic or literacy work mm -hmm. from the story that they've just heard. Okay. And then you find that you've uh, met the head, you've met the heart, and you've, uh, the hands have also been involved. Okay, those are very nice approaches. Yeah. Uh, besides making sure that these uh, students or th these kids are learning, are still being able to continue with their education, how are you taking care of their psychological part? How are you trying to make sure that these kids are doing well mentally? Uh, how are you trying to make sure that you're following up in terms to really understand has this pandemic affected them? Are these, uh, have these changes affected the kids? What strategies have you put on to make sure that they are psychologically okay even as we continue to make sure that education-wise they are doing well? Ruth? Yeah, for me, uh, as a uh my colleague has said it's very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And we use stories, mm -hmm. healing stories, mm -hmm. whereby you just narrate the story to the child and let them inter have an inter interpretation mm -hmm. of uh, what, what, uh, what they interpret. Because mm -hmm. each one of us will hear and interpret in their own way. Mm -hmm. So what we've been doing with them is to tell them stories which we will cater for their emotions, their hearts, their psychological needs. Mm -hmm. And again, talking to them now and then, because the platform we are using, mm -hmm. we are able to, to see each other and talk to each other on like a daily basis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I really like the, sto the telling the story part mm -hmm. where a child has not to take the time and internalize and really understand uh, mm -hmm. everything that is happening. But probably is that still the same thing that you get to do with probably the 18 months old uh, kids? Are they still able to also capture that and take it as the elder ones? Yeah, what we do with our stories, we, 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 are, we are able to, to do stories according to the age of the child. Like a young child mm -hmm. will do a story for about five minutes. Okay. As the age goes increases, you increase the 
minute. Mm -hmm. And then out of, again, also with stories, mm -hmm. we do a lot of painting with mm -hmm. them, which is again healing. The, the artworks mm -hmm. we are doing with them are uh, connected with stories and the drawings and the uh, painting and modeling those mm -hmm. arts they are very healing to the soul okay yeah. uh, we know that when we're talking about physical learning that is when the, st the students come in class and the teacher is there it is very easy for you to follow up it is very easy for you to know the student who is not maybe strong at a certain area so how are you able during the e-learning to still follow up on that to know that these are probably this is a student who probably is not is weak in a certain area and is managed to still make sure that you have in probably if it's what like it's personal or uh, separate lessons between uh, you and for that kid separate from the others to just make sure that as you would continue with tracing and follow-ups during the physical uh, learning, that you're still able to do it now during the e-learning, um, Augustus? Well, um, interestingly, we still have our physical lessons ongoing. Mm -hmm. And something else that I have to mention, also in World of, we have World of Games. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, the teacher has come up with uh, very many games mm -hmm. that could be done indoors, mm -hmm. others could be also be done outside. Mm -hmm. So the teacher introduces something and shows them what to do. Mm -hmm. And then if there is one who has uh, some challenges in something, as the others continue practicing something, he tells uh, that child like perhaps, okay, you Ivy, please, okay, let's do uh, this together with you. Let's do star jumps. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think you are raising too low. Uh, please go a bit higher. And then he uh, he's able to meet that child mm -hmm. at the point of need. Okay. Yeah. In terms of discipline, yes. uh, how are you able to make sure that you're maintaining discipline? And when I talk about discipline, it's not the point where, like the discipline where the kids have to dress up in a certain way. Discipline in terms of consistency in the times when probably there is a class probably at 11 a.m that every child probably is supposed to be locked on or uh, uh, present during that class is able to do that. How are you able to maintain discipline, Ruth? Uh, uh, for before we started, we came up with rules mm -hmm. of e-learning. Mm -hmm. And uh, every teacher has, uh, 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 you are responsible for the students you teach. Mm -hmm. And uh, each morning, you have to set rules together. Mm -hmm. And uh, those rules, they are they are set and uh, there are some rules we are following and uh, if you don't follow them, mm -hmm. there are consequences. Mm -hmm. But for, for me, dealing with the younger ones, mm -hmm. uh, I'm lucky because there's always somebody there to mm -hmm. assist them. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I also have to look at the child and to see where they are mm -hmm. and if they are tired, uh, I would know. Waldorf is all about the child mm -hmm. and what the child is capable of doing mm -hmm. as a particular age. Okay. So that is uh, back at my mind. Mm -hmm. I know I'm teaching the young ones and uh, there's a limit. Mm -hmm. I, I can't push them. Okay. Yeah. So Ruth has talked about I mean, there's always someone there because she's getting to deal with the younger ones. For you, you deal with um, the kids at the primary level. Probably there's someone who the parent is going to give certain instructions probably to the house manager if the parent has to be out or if the guardian has to probably be at work. How are you able to maintain that discipline? Probably have you had cases of students who have skipped their online classes and how do you get to deal with that? Yes, once or twice I've had some cases whereby we had some skipping classes, mm -hmm. of course. Yes, and uh, before we started the online lessons, it mm -hmm. did happen that we had a uh, kind of... Um, orientation mm -hmm. where like children had to be taught how to use the gadgets mm -hmm. and then even before we started we started the whole process mm -hmm. uh, they were given rules that mm -hmm. were to govern the online uh, online classes mm -hmm. so uh, I'm basically teaching grade one mm -hmm. and of course they are very close to the to the kindergartens yeah so in class one many of them are now able to log in mm -hmm. and they are able to log out they are able to mute their microphones so in discipline might appear if a child doesn't know how to use all this. Okay. So it happens that um, if uh, a child wants to go to the toilet, mm -hmm. the child is able to block his or her camera mm -hmm. and go do whatever he or she wants to do, then mm -hmm. comes back. Okay. Yeah. If a child is tired, they will say, okay, teacher, I think I'm feeling like I'm tired. Then I just give them some time to 
have some time off. Okay. Yes. The, we've not ha you've not had issues of because there's always that person who doesn't really want to be there, especially now with the environment changing. You know, it's different when you have to sit in a classroom. Yes. You can really not escape. You have to stay there until that lesson probably is over or until a certain activity is done. But now you're at home. There's an option. You can be teacher. I'm tired, but basically they just want to maybe go and try out their the, the video games or they want to go and do a certain activity. How are you able to? really make sure that these kids are very well interested and you have to keep them there until the end of it despite the distractions because I'm sure distractions are there. Well, I think I need to answer this because <laughs> uh, that usually happens in the primary. Uh -huh. And the way our world of woodland uh, lessons are, or just general world of uh, lessons are, you find that, uh, as I did mention, we have three parts. Uh -huh. And they always liked the every part to be there, mm -hmm. especially the, the part that they are moving, mm -hmm. the part that they are listening to that story. Mm -hmm. Because we have like a three-day rhythm. Mm -hmm. Day one, something has been introduced. Day two, something is done about what was introduced yesterday. And mm -hmm. day three, they are now working on something that was introduced on, uh, on Monday or, uh, or the previous day. Okay. So they don't want to miss that. Uh, so you, you as a teacher, we design our lessons in a way that they are very interesting, mm -hmm. that do not bore the child. Mm -hmm. In world of we should say a teacher should never expire. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> That's and, a nice and one. And maybe to add uh, something about that, mm -hmm. we, uh, as if put it, it's uh, more to do with breathing in and out. Mm -hmm. So as a teacher, you have to, to have a limit. You mm -hmm. can't go too much on the head. Mm -hmm. So you will have a limit and then you see now the children are getting tired, mm -hmm. so you introduce something. Mm -hmm. Still learning, but you introduce something where they have to now stand up and move. Mm -hmm. If they are tired again, you introduce somewhere, they will sit and do something with mm -hmm. their hands. Okay. So it's a holistic mm -hmm. way of teaching children. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with the online class, with the online, uh, with the e-learning, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm sure like parents and caregivers and guardians are so much involved. So what is their role? in all these for all these to be a success i believe it's it's supposed to be a very good collaboration between the parent and the teacher and if the teacher is not if the parent is not there probably the person taking care of the child if it's the house manager if it's the nannies how what is the role of all these people and how have they been able to contribute in making sure that uh, during this difficult time as you continue fighting uh, COVID-19 you're still able to make sure that you're offering uh, very the, like top-notch services to your students yeah for me I would say we are caught teaching together mm -hmm. with the parents mm -hmm. because uh, even in the beginning of the time we had to send them the year plan mm -hmm. and the timetable mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. so that they are aware each day what is coming up. Mm -hmm. So the role of the parent at this time of uh, COVID mm -hmm. is crucial. Mm -hmm. And for e-learning to happen, the parents must come in and assist the teachers in all this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as we talk today about all the things that your school has been able to adopt to, all the strategies, everything that you've tried to adopt to, to make sure that things at least continue. We cannot say it's continuing as normal because there are certain things that, uh, that have changed that we cannot call no more but now for a teacher watching us at home today for a parent watching us tonight for a student watching us tonight but they're not able to do the e-learning probably they're in a school where they are not able to do all these things or a home state where they really do not even maybe probably have the internet access to be able to carry out such activities what do you think uh, mr augustus is something that they can adopt to at least make sure that even if they don't have the 100% that certain people are able to have, they at least have 10%. Even if it means it's a quiz, if it's a, just a certain a message or certain information to just constantly remind this child that you still need to think about your education, you can do one, two, three, or how parents can be able to guide their kids around this during this pandemic time, Mr. Augustus. Yes, I do know it's, it's challenging, especially uh, in some parts where mm -hmm where children cannot get access to, these, to the gadget. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do want to believe that uh, in every community, mm -hmm. there are a set of things that usually happen there. Mm -hmm. And education is not necessarily the books and doing homeworks. Mm -hmm. The time that they sit down with their mother and discuss something, mm -hmm. that is education. Okay. 
the time that they go and interact with their, uh, with their friends, mm -hmm. that is education. Mm -hmm. The time that they've known how to wash this dish mm -hmm. in, a, in a way that they never knew, mm -hmm. that is education. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We've seen a recent uh, increase in teenage pregnancies for the, last f for the last four months. And if you try to track, this is probably during the same time when we started, um, when the pandemic hit the country. What do you think really parents can do? Because right now the parents are the ones at home with the mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. The teachers are not there, it's the parents. But we're having these numbers that are very that are so high and so alarming that you start to worry if this thing continues like this and we have to wait till September, what happens? So for you, Ruth, as a mother mm -hmm. and as a parent and as a teacher, for a mother watching us or a parent watching us tonight, what can they do? What responsibility do they have to try and make sure that we try and not have these numbers go higher than they are right now mm -hmm. okay yeah I would say that you you have to be close mm -hmm. to, to these teenagers and mm -hmm. uh, get to talk to them speak to them as a mother and somebody who is close to them get to know what they are doing mm -hmm. don't just uh, be comfortable when they say I'm going out with so and so just get to know what they are doing like <laughs> you follow up and uh, find out what is happening mm -hmm. to them because uh, right now there are there are no school there's no school going on and they feel mm -hmm. they are free and they can walk around and uh, interact with everyone so i would uh, i would say for us adults who are responsible for these teenagers and everyone close to us mm -hmm. we be there for them and we talk to them and we, we, we get to, to, to instill the good mm -hmm. morals in them and to tell them there's time for everything. Mm -hmm. There's time for learning. There's mm -hmm. time for tomorrow. There will come time for you to go out and uh, d uh, have fun and do all these things you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Augustus, what is your comment on the rise of teenage pregnancies? As now, as we have, those, we have all the students at home and we have these issues of certain as students probably getting, girls getting pregnant, and we're talking about girls as young as 11, 12 years old. I think that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. uh, in West Africa, we have this saying that says, uh, when you are peeling peanuts for a blind person, make sure that you're whistling, that he knows that you're not eating them. Mm -hmm. And this is a wake up call for what has been happening, especially in, uh, some, in our societies, Mm -hmm. We are very lucky in our world of uh, schools, we have uh, a lesson that we call life orientation. Mm -hmm. And it starts from teenage. When they turn 13, uh, they start this life orientation. Every, uh, every, every week they have like uh, an hour session mm -hmm. where they talk about things. They talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. And now this is a wake up call because uh, it tells us about many things that are not happening. Mm -hmm. or they should be happening in a different way. Mm -hmm. That our children do not know much about themselves. Mm -hmm. They do not know much about when something happens like this, okay, uh, it's going to lead to this. Mm -hmm. And this is because of, I'll just blame the education system. Okay. And I'm very happy with the CPC that is coming, mm -hmm. which has borrowed so many things from our world of uh, schools. Mm -hmm. That uh, it's going to make children know who they are and then they discover so many things for themselves because when they are doing this could be they are experimenting they don't know even uh, whatever they have exists mm -hmm. they just experimented and then oh out came pregnancy yeah yeah okay uh ruth your final comments on this topic tonight yeah it's for us to to embrace it because <laughs> COVID is here mm -hmm. and we have to get to learn to live with it mm -hmm. and to get to get uh, ways out of it mm -hmm. and to follow the ministry's rules mm -hmm. and we are going to overcome mm -hmm. all of us together. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so guys, that is all that we hand for you tonight. We hope that if you are watching us, you've learned probably something. If you're a parent or a teacher at home, maybe you're not able to assess um, to assess e-learning or to be able to afford that, you can find other ways in which you can try to have your uh, your children engaged in different activities. You can also try, um, I believe parents can also come up with certain schedules and make sure that they are probably giving small assignments to their mm. to their children, yeah. which is very achievable. So thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Next week, please tune, uh, tune in and listen to us as we talk about teenage pregnancies. This is something that has really uh, been alarming since the 
pandemic in the country. We've seen very high numbers uh, in terms of teenage pregnancies in the country. We're going to be tackling that and see what can be done as we fight the pandemic. We do not get to forget about our young girls. Thank you very much. My name is Patricia Marioki. Have yourselves a very good night.